Hello, everyone. Here we are live today, Thursday, June 16th. Hello, hello, everybody. Well, here's a wonderful, another wonderful, awesome interview. So let's take care of a little housekeeping. If you are joining us live in the comments below, all right, type in hashtag live or if it's the replay, hashtag replay. And if you'd like to comment while the interview is going on, make sure that you click StreamYard, uh, the, the stripe that's above, and let StreamYard get, uh, have permission to use your name. It's for your own protection. And so um, if you don't click that, you'll come across as Facebook user, and we won't know who is joining us live. And we sure would love to interact with you if you want to comment, especially. Now, if you just want to react, just make sure that you send us some hearts. We love those hearts instead of the thumbs up. So um, let me tell you how my guest and I met. We, we actually met online, and I've said it more than once. You meet the nicest people online, and it is so true. We have some mutual friends. Uh, we met through a a project of a mutual friend, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We also have the same mentors, Mary Morrissey, Tony Robbins, Maya Komorota. Uh, my guest is an entrepreneur. She's a wife. She's a mom. She's a potter. She's a retreat organizer. So without any further ado, let us meet Sarah Schillen. How are you? <laughs> Did I pronounce that last name properly? Shaleen, but that's close. <laughs> how are you? How are you? I'm good, Lucy. How are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, you're very, very welcome. Listen, I'm coming in from Mexico, as my audience knows. Where are you coming in from? I am coming in from Canada, northeast of Edmonton, Alberta, on Moose Lake. On uh, Moose Lake. Were you born on Moose Lake? I was not. I was born in British Columbia, Canada, in a little town called Nelson, okay. which is a really beautiful community. I do. I do happen to know Nelson, British Columbia. So what brought you from B.C. to Alberta? Yes. But what, what did bring you to, you know, from one from one province to the other? A lot of people yes. don't know that in, in Canada we have provinces, right? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. We have provinces. And yeah, it was work. I came to Alberta for work. A lot of people do. Alberta's infamous for its oil and its um, lots of opportunity for employment. Okay. So um, so were, were you married at the time or did you meet your husband there or how did No, that I met my husband as I progressed through my career. I actually met my husband in all place of all places in Fort McMurray, Alberta. Ah, now I know that you spent uh, your whole career working with the First Nations. Were you yes. doing that at the time that you met your husband? Yeah, I sure was. I was on a secondment up to work with the Miccosukee Cree First Nation up in Fort McMurray. Mm -hmm. And I worked with all the Athabasca Tribal Council First Nations up there as well. There's five First Nations and some, all, some um, Métis groups up there as well that I worked closely with while I was there. You know, could you enlighten our audience a little bit? Because when people talk about First Nations, you know, I know in Canada, uh, we know what that means. But, I, I, you know, I'm not quite sure that all our U.S. folks and, and global people understand what that really means. Could you explain a little bit what, what that term means, First Nations? Yeah, I sure can. Yeah, First Nations is how we refer to the indigenous population of Canada, the original people that were here before Canada was colonized by Europeans. Okay. So that's how, that's how, that's why you refer them as first nations. Now yes. you, you volunteer. So you volunteer a lot. Was this a volunteer job or, or was this a paid job that you had? This was a paid job. I actually worked for the Alberta, the province of Alberta. Okay. I worked in their environmental department and um, this was a secondment that I went on. I went up north for a year and we extended it for six months with the idea that I would go work with the First Nations and help them understand how government worked. And in return, I would come back to government and share with them what I learned from working with the First Nations up north. Oh, how interesting. Were you a student in political science or what was your background? 
I got my degree in business. Okay. So I have a business degree and associate degree in arts as well. So that got my foot in the door with the position working with the major oil sands projects up in Fort McMurray. And mm -hmm. throughout that process, we did a consultation process with the First Nations. And that led towards my succumbent and towards me going up north to work with them for a while. Okay, so you were you were born in BC, educated pretty much in BC, also, right? Yes, yeah. And 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 then moved then moved to Alberta and uh, met your husband. Yeah, I met him while I was up in Fort McMurray. Yeah, was he doing the same kind type of work? Or, or? he is in the oil industry, so he was working up there um, in construction mm -hmm. for oil sands leases. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about you being a mom, because the reason I want to talk about that is because you and I are part of a mom's project that is headed by with uh, by um, Shika Kana, who is our mutual friend, and that's how we both met. Now, how did you meet Shika? Now, for the audience, Shika lives in India, all right? <laughs> she is a well-known photographer in India, um, one of the first to start um, shooting you know, babies at, when they were born. And, 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 I, and I'm going to let uh, Sarah talk a little bit about that. So how did you come in contact with Shika? Shika and I both took a course together. It was a 90-day business accelerator course mm -hmm. for online? launching your business online. Okay. And that's when we met. Okay. Who put, who put that course together, actually? Kara McCarran. She okay. has a group called the Love Soldiers. Okay. And she we met through the Tony Robbins events, actually, is how I was connected to Kara and how I learned about all of the work that she does. And I took her course with Sheikah and everything has progressed since then. So, so Tony Robbins being the great connector, you know, because we have that in common. And, and, uh, and of course, my whole program comes from, you know, was built on, on from Tony's uh, new legacy program. So, okay. So, um, what is uh, what? Could, let's talk about the the Moms Project a little bit. Sure. Um, could you tell us what um, you know? First of all, the name of the project and what it entails. Sheikah's Moms Project is a hundred uh, one hundred dreams, one hundred mothers, and she interviewed 100 moms over the course of a year. I think it was about a year that she did it. And she is creating a coffee, coffee table book. So each page in that book will have a self-portrait done by the mother that she interviewed. And that mother will have a short write-up of their story, what they want the world to know about their story as a mother or in general and they'll have their self-portrait there as well so it will be a book that will be published and available and it's a really beautiful project that has connected a hundred moms and through the connection between a hundred moms it has a web has gone out right and we've connected to several other different projects and charities and we've done we've come together and we've done a run for moms that we all did for one month we tried to collectively walk or run or whatever kind of exercise 10,000 kilometers in a month to raise money for, for charities. And yeah, we just keep getting connected to do more super interesting things together so that together we can all make an impact in the world. Absolutely. And the greatest impact that we're going to make on one another is that Shika's hope is to bring us all to India and we get to actually meet one another and embrace one another and, you know, champion one another. That's so exciting. So I'm looking forward to meeting you there. Now we do have a Facebook user, someone, you know, so if you're, if you're watching, make sure that you click uh, StreamYard and just, you know, just click it and, and give them permission to use your name. So somebody said, okay, well, that's amazing. She gets incredible. And uh, and then um, our, our Facebook user had to go and she will try to, or he will try to watch the replay after oh. this. So th thank Thanks you. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Exactly. Okay. So uh, let's talk about you as a potter. I think, um, as I understand, when we, you and I spoke, 
we had, um, you, you used to, um, I, I, th I think you used to kind of um, teach people um, and, and, and you volunteered to do this, right? As, you know, did you know, okay, why pottery? <laughs> Let me start. Why pot? Because I'm, uh, because I'm flabbergasted. Why? Why people are interested in, in what they do? So why yes. was pottery interesting to you? I took pottery in university actually, as I was getting my business degree, mm -hmm. and I took it the whole way through, and it it wound up being something I absolutely enjoyed to do. It's something where you are using your hands, you're using creativity. Four hours can go by, and the blink yeah. of an eye and you when you're that concentrating you concentrate that hard on what you're doing you lose kind of you get to escape reality for a bit right. escape your thoughts escape your worries escape anything that's racing through your mind it's very therapeutic and I just absolutely fell in love with it and I kept doing it right everywhere I went I moved several times and every time I moved somewhere I took the beginner's course at their guild or their club or wherever I possibly could. And then when I moved to Bonneville, which is where I am now, there was a pottery club, but there wasn't very many people in it. So I started teaching it. So I started teaching the beginner's course and I did that for 10 years while I worked and raised my kids and kept it really a big part of my life. I always have. And, and that's so interesting because when I think of pottery, I think of all the importance of pottery in, in our life. I mean, you know, people are still discovering pottery, you know, of thousands of years ago. And it really mm -hmm. is a way of telling stories. And if I, and if I remember, I saw a, a piece of pottery on your, on your website that, of a, of, a, of a mug, and I want to talk about that in a minute, that says inside it says relax. You know, that tells a whole story about our generation of people <laughs> that we have to write the word relax inside of a cup, <laughs> you know, because we're all so very busy. I mean, you know, can you think about somebody discovering this cup, this piece of pottery a hundred years from now and somebody saying relax? It's like, <laughs> you, know? you know, so that's the way I see pottery. So it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's just amazing to me why people will get into it, but you know, you're in the flow also, you know, you're, you yeah, know, flow is a good way of putting it. Mode, something you really love, you know, that's when you know that you love it when you can get into that flow. So I know that you do a, a, a workshops now you mm -hmm. have, I know that you have done mug workshops. What is the fascination with mugs? Because everybody, you know, everybody has a mug from, from a pottery mug. What's the fascination about the mugs? Is it because it's just the easiest thing to do? No, I don't think so. I think it's one of the most functional things to do. Okay. Because you use, you, you drink coffee or tea every day. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's up in your cupboard that you would see often. There's lots of different projects that we could do. The thing I like about a mug is just that, that you get to use it. And incorporating the words into it. I find is a really good way of anchoring people to an intention or a thought or, like relax or just be yeah. or breathe. Or a quote. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, a quote, a quote you can put on there too. And I find too mugs are something that even 15, 20 years down the line, you still have it in your cupboard and it still has somebody's name underneath it of the year that you made it. And it's, it's a memory sake. It's a keepsake and it's, made by somebody's hands so it has more meaning than it would just your odd mug that you buy at the store very true and and you know that that person had you in mind especially if it's a gift to you had you in mind when they did it I mean they took the time I mean it's a beautiful thing really when you think about it yeah you know? so I know that you do not just mug workshops you do different types of workshops how do you decide what workshop to do from, from one time to the other? Do you take a survey of people, or of your clients, or how do you do that? No, not yet. I haven't. I could, I could do that, I guess. There's a range of projects that you could do. 
Um, I've started off with mugs and I do a decorative birdhouse workshop as well, okay. which the decorative birdhouses are really amazing because there's lots of little details you can put into them. Right. Windows and doors and birds and plants and flowers and lots of um, details. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really it's really creative. So I really enjoy doing that. And over time, I'll come up with different ideas and it would be a good idea to put a survey out to people to see where their interest would be, whether they want to make a tray or they want to make a cup mm -hmm. or they want to make something more sculptural or something more functional, a plate. There's lots of different things that you can make. So, the, so actually, I, I know that you, you know, you, you have a workshop that's called pop-up workshop. I mean, <laughs> is that just something like anybody can come and you can do whatever you want or uh, what's, what was that all about? I think the idea with the pop-up pottery workshops and any kind of pop-up events, they've been doing that a lot lately with um, uh, exercise type things like yoga or classes like that. They'll have, or pop-up markets. They have mm -hmm. event, They have a lot of those these days too. And basically that's a term for, you've kind of, it's pop-up, like you've just planned it kind of last minute and you're throwing it out there. Here's a pop-up pottery workshop. If you can make it, come and join me. Oh wow, that's 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 really great. But then I think you you have more than just a, a workshop. It lasts what an hour or two, three hours, or so, uh, usually three to four hours, depending on two to four hours, depending on what you're making. Yeah, and and you do a little something extra for your people when that you come to the workshop, don't you? I mean, I see that you do a little charcuterie. I do. <laughs> yes, I love the charcuterie board. So. I combine that with my pottery. So when you come, I have a lovely spread for you on a charcuterie board. And I use that time while you eat to demonstrate the project and teach you what we're going to be doing. And then we move it off to the side and we make the project together and you can continue grazing on it throughout your time there. And it's, uh, it's a really lovely afternoon or evening. Wow. So that's cool. So, so basically your workshops are for local people. Um, do you do do you do workshops online? Not yet, but that is an option. I think yeah. the the tough part with doing a workshop online for pottery, I guess you would be targeting people that already have their own um, tools and material, right? Because you would yeah. need the clay and you would need the tools, and uh, yeah, but that's a an option for sure. Because you, because really also there's you could teach uh, the history of pottery. You know people, you know that's very interesting to me. You know it's interesting how there's so many things you can do. So okay, so you know I want to go to the next hat that you wear. Okay, <laughs> which is um, well, for, for, first of all I know that uh, um, you know you are. Um, a potterer, your mom. You have two sons, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. How old are your sons, by the way? I have a ten-year-old and a thirteen-year-old. My thirteen-year-old is just about fourteen. And do they do they know how to work pottery? A little bit. Uh -huh. I mean, you can keep their attention span that long. They've given it a try. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's talk about you, the retreat organizer, and sure. I'm very interested in that because. Um, when I retired, I remember thinking to myself, you know what I want to do? I want to have one retreat every year for about a, a week, you know, so I'm very, very interested in retreats. And I think they're, I think they're very kind of um, interesting. So um, how, first of all, how did you get into the whole idea of retreats? That was the course that Sheik and I took with Kara. When I first took that course, I took it with the intention of teaching pottery online, actually, okay. and doing the workshops online and teaching about it. And as we were working through the program, she suggested that, why don't you do a retreat? You live in such a beautiful place uh -huh. and you have the space for it. Why don't you make pottery one of the things that you offer at your retreats? And it would open up the door for you to do so much more with it. And that's when the whole idea of White Trees Retreats was created. And I've been working on setting it up. I've done a few retreats already and I incorporate the pottery into it and do some mind training, mindset training ahead of time to prepare people when they come. 
And right now I'm doing mini retreats. They're over a weekend. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a chance for people to get away, come see a different area of the world, come and relax and be catered to. It's all inclusive, all your meals and everything that you need is here. And you can come and relax and just press pause for a while and, and get away. I think we're all so busy all the time. We don't take the time. Yes, to... you're absolutely right. Uh, but, you know, I, in fact, I'm going on a retreat next week. I'm, but I'm going to Cancun. I live in Mexico, so it's really it was really easy for me to choose this retreat because it's happening in Cancun. I thought, oh, that's an easy flight for me. And why wouldn't I do it? So, I, you know, I chose it. But why would somebody go all the way to Canada? for a retreat. I mean, you talk about, I know how beautiful Alberta is. You talk about white trees retreat. You must have white trees there. I do. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about that. Tell us about that place. Yeah. So I live right at the lake and it's a beautiful lake. There's um, fresh water islands at the back that you can kayak through and there's birds and it's a bird sanctuary, actually. And I have property with which is covered in white trees. It's all aspen and birch. And I have uh, grounding trails that go through there. And it's very beautiful. And yeah, you can have a bonfire and sit by the lake. You can sit out on the dock with your coffee if you like. And it's just really, truly relaxing to get out in nature and reconnect. And I guess... I would invite people to come check Canada out. Absolutely. I guess you would have to be on your bucket list to come see Canada. And you could also combine it with, this is for international people, maybe not so much the local people, but you could combine that trip with seeing the Rocky Mountains or um, that's a, a, an amazing part of Canada to see and could quite easily be tagged onto a trip on top, on, alongside with one of my retreats. And yeah. I think there's a lot of reasons to come to Canada, Lucy. <laughs> no, well, I was thinking, well, I, I, I asked you that just purposely because I wanted to solicit all that information from you because I know how beautiful Alberta is. And I've been to Alberta and, I, and I, I'm from Canada. I was born in Canada. So I, I, I just wanted to get all that information from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, but you know, the thing is, is that you, I mean, you, you, talk, you talk about bird watching. I mean, so it's a bird watching paradise. You talk about being able to kayak. You talk about being able to hike. Do you know how many groups, uh, how many different groups would love just, you know, hiking groups or kayaking groups or bird watching? I mean, we have a lot of people that come to Mexico for, but that are bird watchers, you know, and um, they're always looking for, for, for places to go. So, oh, my God, this is so I'm, I'm so excited for you. Now, that would be in the summertime. Now, yes. I know Alberta has a lot of snow. I know it can be cold because it's Canada. So do you have retreats in the wintertime? Like, I love to ski. Do you, I mean, do you have downhill skiing retreats? Do you have, I mean, tell us about that. Yeah, as you move through the seasons, that's the beautiful thing about Canada is you do have spring, summer, fall, and winter. Mm -hmm. And each one has its amazing attributes over the summer there's our properties covered in blueberries and saskatoon berries and raspberries and lots of stuff that you can do with berry picking and getting out and walking or hiking as you move into the fall the trees all of the leaves turn a brilliant yellow color and they're just gorgeous and the summer over the summer like even starting now as we get to the longest day of the year and over the summer into the fall the days are long, the sun is out for an amazingly long time, and sunsets go into the wee hours of the morning. You just have endless sunsets up here. And as you move into the, the winter, we do get lots of snow and we do get very cold up here, but we do cross country skiing. There is a downhill ski hill not far from us, snowshoeing, we, I do oh, urban pulling, and um, we have an ice fishing hut that has a little fireplace in it and oh skidoos and like the winter doesn't stop us up here. I have lots of things about winter that I really appreciate doing and that I look forward to. So winter sports with, you know, Sarah, how beautiful. I just, I mean, I'm, I'm, my mind's just going. It's like, which, 
which retreat, which one would I go on? And I, of course, you know, coming from Mexico, I'd want more than a weekend. I'd want a week, you know? Yeah. So tell us about your accommodations because um, obviously, you know, I'm letting, first of all, let's talk about your groups. How big are your groups? Because it has something to do with your accommodations, right? Yeah, it sure does. So at this time, my groups are, are small groups, about five to 10 people, depending on um, whether you're open to double occupancy. So that would depend if you're traveling with a friend or a spouse or children and you were, were okay sharing a room. But I have five rooms and I also have a fifth wheel for some extra overflow as well. And the rooms are at an Airbnb next door and on my property as well. And my dream for the future is to own the property next door to me as well and build on maybe little cabins and uh, um, wonderful. a commercial kitchen and a whole the whole shebang. So I have big dreams and big hopes. Oh, I never, never stop dreaming. I mean, I just can see it grow and grow and grow. I mean, it's just so, so exciting as far as I'm concerned. So who does the cooking? Who does what? Who does the cooking? <laughs> I have local <laughs> caterers that do I the do. cooking for us. Okay. okay. And so if, if, for example, if I wanted to go on one of your summer, your white trees uh, retreat, uh, what kind of equipment would I need? What, what you know? What would, would that mean? First of all, give me the big results that, that I would get from going on a retreat like that. And what kind of stuff would I need to take with me? You'd want to be able to dress for the weather. So you could be prepared with like a coat and shoes. Mm -hmm. And for pottery, you need to be able to tie your hair back and maybe have a set of clothes. You don't mind getting dirty. Right. Same with a pair of shoes. And for outdoors, you just want to probably have a hat and a jacket and maybe some hiking boots and bathing suit and towel if it's the summer. If it's the winter, you'd have a list of winter type layering clothes that you would want to bring so that you could be prepared for the weather. And pretty much everything else we provide. If it was going to be skiing, then I would I would advise people to bring their skis if they could. Right. Otherwise, they'd have to rent them in Edmonton before they came up here because Edmonton is the closest international airport to where I am. And yeah, the biggest benefit you're going to have from coming here is just the ability to be involved in a retreat gives you that chance to be able to relax and take time to yourself and mm -hmm. connect with other people and yourself and rest and reju reju rejuvenate yourself and take a break. And really be with nature. I mean, really, yeah. I mean, you can't be more. <laughs> I mean, you're you're far away from everything, and so you. Uh, but you know, a lot of people don't know how to relax in nature. You know, they're always so busy. How do you? I know that you mentioned previously that you kind of have a a a. Um, a, a is it a questionnaire that you go through with people to see if it's a good fit for them or? Or what? Uh, so do you kind of go over that kind of information with them? How yeah, for sure. If, if you had any questions or you wanted to have a discovery call with me, we can talk about that kind of thing in detail about what you need or what you're interested in doing. And, and um, yeah, it's, I'm happy to work with everybody to make them feel as comfortable as possible and to feel like they're prepared and ready to come. Right. So if anybody wanted to contact you, the contact in the um, stick, stickler there down below, it says that they can go to your website, which is www.whitetreesretreats.com or by email, it would be white trees, like many trees are white, white yeah. trees retreats at gmail.com or they can simply call you on the telephone. Seven eight zero two zero one four seven zero zero. Okay, I want to do mention one more thing before you go. Um, okay. You have a blog. I do. You have a blog on your website. So, what do you blog about? Your experience. I blog about 
anything really. I started my blog kind of explaining how white trees came about and explaining mm -hmm. some things about pottery. And I give health and wellness type tips about mindset and grounding and nature and the types of activities. I've done blogs about the types of activities that are up here and how they change throughout the seasons. And yeah, I try to provide value as much as I can in my blogs and and I really enjoy doing them. So, so if they went to your website, then they could um, subscribe to your blog, right? Yeah, they sure could. And actually, right now, if you go to my website and you want to sign up for my newsletter, I have uh, a package of 28 days worth of affirmations that, that I'll send that I think is really important for every day to take some time to go to use positive affirmations and use positivity in your day every day. Absolutely. You know, I'm a firm believer in mindset and, and, and setting your mind every day for sure. Yeah. So, if, you know, I know I was going to ask you what's next for you. I know that India's on your mind. That's yeah. a, And I'm looking forward to meeting you and the other 98 moms. So, but you know, career wise or, or, um, do you, call, do you call yourself a coach? Do you consider no. yourself a coach? No. No, not really, no. But it is kind of like that, I guess. Yeah. But, but you know, you do, you do offer these retreats, which are wonderful. I mean, every season has a retreat, as far as yeah. I can see, with you. And so um, is there anything up, up your sleeve that's coming that we should know about? Sarah? <laughs> um, yeah, keep your eye open for retreat dates up here. And okay. in the future, I'd also like to start um, planning international retreats where I take people for a week somewhere around the world and take my retreats international. Oh, is great. So that's, that's, the you. that's the future you. That's the future. Yes. I mean, that's the future memory. Wow, that's great. Okay, so we do have our Facebook user says that um, her or his grandparents live in Bonneville, Alberta. That's amazing. Oh, right on. I knew who that was, but we'll find out. So, anywho, um, so I just want, is there anything that I haven't touched upon that perhaps, Sarah, you want to tell our audience about you, the retreats, your pottery workshops or you know anything anything else like that so that they should know about you hmm or have i covered everything <laughs> you've done pretty good there's always lots more to cover but absolutely absolutely so people should watch uh, go to your website sign up for the newsletter get those affirmations those are really good follow you on the blog because there's lots of good value there and, and, and also watch for dates for your next retreats because there's yes. plenty coming, coming down the pipeline, as they say, you know, there are four seasons in Canada. So opportunity for a retreat every season of the year. So wonderful. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Sarah. It's been a pleasure having you here and, and knowing so much about what you do. I love what you do. And I just think that, you know, it, it's, you have so much to offer. It's unbelievable. And and you yeah. live in a beautiful part of the world and that's, that, and you're taking advantage of it. And so that's great. And, and offering this to people is like, you know, priceless as far as I'm concerned. So, so thank you for being here. And I want to thank my audience also for being here and just remember that um, your story matters. So if you, um, are interested in letting us know what your story is, do contact me, let me know, and we'll make that happen. And so thank you again for everyone who participated today and those of you who will be seeing the replay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you thank again, you. Sarah. And ciao, everybody. Thank you.